In December 1997, Guy Kramer had challenged Professor Stephen Hawking with a paper that discussed the irreversibility in the direction of time. Professor Hawking's assistant emailed Guy shortly after saying that Stephen had reviewed Guy's paper and would respond as soon as possible. Stephen passed away on March 14, 2018, without a response to Kramer. Other physicists through the years had reached out to Guy to suggest that he had backed Hawking into a corner that he was unable to get out of, without admitting that Guy had proved him wrong, and that admission would go against Stephen's core beliefs. Time travel was one of Hawking's favorite subjects to imagine and on June 28, 2009 he hosted a party for time travelers at the University of Cambridge, however, he did not send out any invitations until the following day, hoping that, one day someone living in the future will find the information, and use a wormhole time machine to come back to my party, proving that time travel will one day be possible. Hawking waited in the room for a few hours before leaving and no visitors arrived. He regarded the event as experimental evidence that time travel is not possible. However, 11 years earlier, Hawking was presented evidence from Guy Kramer that time travel was possible. Hawking, like most physicists, was adamant that you could only go forward in time, you might be able to go faster or slower depending on your speed in the universe, but never backwards in time. A time reversal is not impossible with known physical laws but referred to as a virtually infinitely unlikely event, it is too unlikely to expect it actually to happen. In other words it is known as the irreversibility in the direction of time. In 1997 Guy was 30 years old and a relative nobody in the realm of physics and was challenging one of the world's most brilliant minds about one of his favorite subjects, time travel. However, in 2024, Guy Kramer holds 11 patents in the field of optics with over 400 patent claims granted with a light-bending material, which has demonstrated the ability to make a target invisible, a solar panel amplifier, which can triple solar panel output, a laser splitter, which can split a laser into over 10 million lasers, and a holographic-like video display system. Over 2,500 years ago, the history of a country and a city were foretold and documented accurately to within days of modern events that took place within the last 76 years. The predictions are very accurate, in one case after 932,400 days the event occurred within 17 days, and another was on the very day after 173,880 days had gone by. The only possible explanations are massive time reversals, and according to our present knowledge of the universe, this should be impossible for a three-dimensional being. Only a being that exists in higher dimensions would be able to transcend the timeline forwards and backwards at will. The Bible tells us that God transcends time. In the beginning, time, God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. Genesis 1 verse 1. A being who created time, space, and matter must be able to operate outside these boundaries. In Isaiah 46 verses 9 to 10 we read the following. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. The Bible is full of prophecies that were fulfilled within biblical time. A prophecy could deceptively be authored into an earlier scripture after the event has happened, so this doesn't offer any proof of transcendence to the modern-day skeptic. In 1988 a calculation was discovered in the Bible that accurately foretold the exact year of 1948 for the independence of Israel over 2,500 years after the prophecy was made. The prophet Jeremiah around 600 BC predicted that because the Jews were turning away from God to idol worship and other gods he would punish them for 70 years under Babylonian captivity. It has been historically documented that this did indeed take place, but again this prophecy could have been written in the Bible after the 70 years were fulfilled. Ezekiel, another prophet, was also alive at this time, further prophesied in Ezekiel for verses 3 to 6 that God knew that his people still would turn away from him. Ezekiel was given a mathematical calculation, which clearly stated the number of years that this punishment lasted would equal 430 years. When we subtract the initial 70 years of punishment from the 430 years, we end up with 360 years of punishment that has been added to the initial 70 years. It has been determined that biblical prophecy uses a 360 day per year rule, not 365 days per year. What happened at the end of the 360 prophetic years of punishment? The people of Israel failed to repent of their sin and disobedience again. 
No further words in the Bible are given on this, but Grant Jeffrey found a solution to the calculation at an earlier point in the Bible. Leviticus 26 verse 18, And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. 360 years times 7 which is 2,520 years, and that equals 907,200 days, add on the initial 70 years, and this places the result as occurring 75 years ago in 1949 AD, but Israel gained their independence in 1948. Grant Jeffrey, the researcher who discovered the calculation, made two slight mathematical mistakes in his calculations in which the correct start year of 606 BC is used, but he used 70 years of 365 days per year for the first part of the prophecy instead of 360 days per year. He also failed to realize that there is no year zero between 1 BC and 1 AD which throws out his calculation by one year. Guy Kramer applied the 360 days to the 70 years and came up with the correct answer of 1948. As Guy was figuring out and correcting Grant's mistakes, Guy noticed that there were two separate 70-year prophecies being used by the prophets. One was for God's people, Israel, and one for God's city, Jerusalem. Guy noticed a similar separation in time between the loss of independence in 606 BC and the loss of Israeli rule in Jerusalem in 587 BC, 606 BC minus 587 BC equals 19 years. Israel did not gain Jerusalem with their independence in 1948, that occurred in 1967 when the Jewish capture of Jerusalem took place during the Six-Day War. The time difference between Israeli independence and the recapture of Jerusalem was also 19 years. Guy applied the same prophetic calculations to both the servitude of the nation, Israel, and the desolations of Jerusalem. When Guy applied the same calculation to the loss of Jerusalem in 587 BC and the recapture of Jerusalem in 1967 AD, we find that after 932,400 days, the prophecy is accurate to within 17 days. The start date in 587 BC used for the calculation was the destruction of Solomon's temple as per Jeremiah 52 verses 12 to 13. The rest of the city may have fallen a few weeks later making up for the 17-day discrepancy. The historical records from non-biblical sources confirms the start times for these prophecies. There is a third prophecy by Daniel that was given at approximately the same time as the other two prophecies. He even links it within one verse of the other two prophecies. Daniel 9 verse 24, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. The Hebrew word translated as weeks literally means years. Just one verse later in Daniel, we see the third prophecy. Daniel 9 verse 25, Know therefore and understand, that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. Another mathematical calculation? Daniel 9 verse 25 states that from the time of the command to rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there will be 483 years. If a Shabuim is a week, seven, of years, it therefore follows that 69 sevens is 483 years. 483 years times 360 days equals 173,880 days. The commandment to restore and build Jerusalem was given by Artaxerxes Longimanus on March 14, for 45 BC. If we jump ahead 173,880 days, we arrive at April 6, 32 AD. This is the first day that Jesus publicly presented himself as the Messiah, riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. When his disciples rejoiced the Pharisees called to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Manuscripts of the Septuagint, a Greek translation of the Old Testament which include the book of Daniel have been carbon-14 dated to the 2nd century BC, meaning that these calculations from Daniel were not written after the time of Jesus. Guy Kramer did not solve the equation in Daniel 9 verse 25, that can be traced back to Sir Isaac Newton who almost solved it, recognizing the 483 years and 360 day years, 
but he dismissed it as he thought there was no linguistic basis for adding those two numbers 49 and 434. Had he done so, he would have solved the calculation that others would do later. So one prophecy concludes with the very year that Israel declares independence in 1948, one within the month that the Jews capture Jerusalem in 1967 and one to the very day that Jesus presents himself as the Messiah. Did a time traveler go back in time to tell the prophets what to write down? As Stephen Hawking's time traveler party demonstrated, going backwards in time is a virtually infinitely unlikely event, so that only leaves one other option, there is a God that transcends time and he spoke to the prophets to foretell of these events, two of which were fulfilled 76 years ago and 56 years ago respectively, while Stephen Hawking was alive. But unlike Stephen, God provided the invitation before the events occurred, it just took us some time to decipher them.